Welcome everybody today. We have a very distinguished guest all the way from Manchester, United Kingdom. Uh, Mark Nutsford is a well-known and respected the world as a Holstein uh, breeder, judge, marketer, embryo transfer, and a host of other interests. And uh, really excited to have you, Mark. I've known you for a long time and had good chats with you over the years about cows and things. And and we're excited to hear what you what we can uh, what we can get into in this little episode. So. Welcome to the Hopcast. Uh, thanks, thanks very much. Yeah, looking forward to it actually. Speaking to you guys. Yeah, we've known each other for a long time and done a lot of things together and keep seeing each other now and again at either at the Winter Fair or Madison or or whatever. So yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, we first met, uh, I think it was back in, I want to say 07 or 08. And uh, at the Cornwall, Royal Cornwall, uh, Holstein show, and we were helping Will grow. Well, they had just bought a lot of cows from you uh, in those in the couple of years previous there, and uh, it wasn't a big show, but uh, we had a lot of fun doing it. We did, yeah, and we uh, I think we won everything, didn't we? Just about every class, and yeah, with our, with our cows, and, and yeah, we, we we had some great fun. We worked hard. We had good fun. And actually, I'm going down to Will's Row tomorrow. Um, I think we've got about 25 cows to flush. So I'll be going past the show ground again um, and, and really looking forward to it. Will you be uh, Will you be selling your whole herd to Will's Row again tomorrow? <laughs> no. <laughs> they've, they've, they've actually asked me in, in, in the past to sell them a whole bunch. Um, the... We're having a sale on August the 19th. It's the first on-farm sale that we've ever had. So I've been keeping quite a few cows back for that. So I'm quite excited about that. We, we've sold portions of the herd in the past over the years, over the last, I think we've been here 23 years now. And we've sold portions of the herd. And it, it's all been done privately. But, uh, never an on-farm sale. So yeah, I'm, I'm getting quite excited about it, to be honest. We're selling a lot of our better cows. there would be a lot of uh, all Britain, all Britain nominations, and, and uh, all to sell. Descendants of uh, three or four ninety-seven point cows that that, that we've out, had here at Riverdale, and and yeah, so we're, we're looking really, really forward to it. Mark, um, before we get too much further, uh, there'd be a lot of a new young listeners to this podcast that may not know um, your history or where you or where you all come from and everything. So let's maybe give us a brief history of uh, your life in, in Holsteins and genetics and, uh, and what got you to where you are now. Wow. How long have you got? <laughs> um, <Sure>. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give you a brief uh, background. I mean, my dad was an engineer, actually. My mum was a nurse. Uh, but my granddad was... Uh, was a dairy farmer and uh, of which my uncle took on so my mum didn't really want anything to do with dairy farming in fact she said if she ever went to a do she she'd run a mile if she saw a dairy farmer because she she used to know what kind of work was involved <laughs> so my dad always wanted me to be an engineer and uh, he got me a load of interviews and everything I just said dad dad I don't really want to be an engineer I said, I, 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 I want to be like granddad, I want to farm. Anyway, eventually he gave in, he says, okay, if that's what you want to do, but you start farming, and, but you also have to go to college as well. So basically that's what I did. And I went to college and uh, I was just about to take a, a job after, after three years at college and uh, on this small dairy farm. Oh, I'm going back in 83 now. And and just before I took the job, we, we, we did a, we, we did a, on the last day of my college, we went to a, a farm trip around a, a 400 cow herd called North Sea Holsteins. All the cows were imported from Canada and um, really enjoyed it. Stayed a couple of years there and I, I and I thought, I really love this dairy farming. But 
I'm working hard here. I'm working 16 hours a day, every day. And if I'm going to do this for the rest of my life, I want to do it for myself. But I had no money. I just had no money zilch at all. So I thought, well, how can I get some money? Anyway, I saw a job in, in, in our local farming magazine for a job in Saudi Arabia as a, as a general farm worker. And uh, so I applied and, and, and luckily I got it because I was already working on a fairly large herd. I think that, that, that helped me. Uh, and I remember there's four of us went out into the desert for um, a company called Almirai or Mastock at the time. It's changed. And I think three of them went back home because it was too hot. It was 130 <laughs> degrees, which is like 50 degrees. And I started farming out there and I quickly worked my way up and became the, like the, 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 the unit manager or the unit herdsman or whatever. And then a job came up. I, I was out there uh, a year, a year and a half, and a job came up for like an area manager down, down in, in, for the group because we had farms all over Saudi. And also at the same time, we started doing embryo transfer out there because the cows were very hard to get in calf in, in, in this week. We, we could sell most of our milk in the summer. So the cows needed to be in, in, in calf early spring. And in early spring, it got to say like 45 degrees very quickly. So it was tough to get them in calf. So the idea was to flush the cows in the winter and put the eggs in in the spring which would hopefully help the pregnancy rate because the eggs were all already fertile uh, when they went in. Anyway, to cut a long story short, it didn't really work. <laughs> but anyway, this Professor Gordon kept coming out to Saudi doing this work and then he got jacked off of coming out to Saudi all the time. So the group decided they would, they would train their own guys. So anyway, I applied for both jobs, the area manager and to train for ET. So I was in, in one of the compounds in Riyadh and the general manager walked in and said, Mark, do you want to give him a pool? I says, yeah, I'll give you get, give him a pool if you want your ass kicking. And <laughs> anyway, he, he, he beat me, I didn't beat him. And he said to me at the end of the game, he says, hey Mark, what would you rather do? Do you want this manager's job? or do you want to go training for embryo transfer? And I said, well, really, I'd love to do the embryo transfer because I'm, I'm good at the fertility side of things. I understand it, blah, 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 blah. So I went to University College Dublin for three months, learned my trade there, stayed with uh, Professor Morris Boland. They came back to Saudi where they helped do helped us to do the work and helped finish off my training. And uh, so I did that for another year. And then, of course, you can only spend so long in the desert. I then went home and I started working for the Milk Marketing Board at the time. Um, they got taken over by the uh, Genus, who it is now, Genus ABS. And... Um, I stayed with them for maybe five years, and then I started up my own business, which was Celtech Embryo Transfer. In the meantime, uh, while all this was going on, I kind of bought a farm. I kind of got married. Uh, myself and Susan, who, who, who was a dairy dairy farmer's daughter as well, and um, we got married, and, and we, we were trying to buy a small holding. And every time a small holding came up, um, all the horsey people jumped on it and, and it was out of our reach. So anyway, in the end, we bought we bought this farm where we're at today, which which was uh, 120 acres, uh, uh, of which we own now. And, and uh, we rent an, another maybe 300. So we, we farm about 450 acres milk, couple hundred cows. Um, 
Yeah, and the the, the rest is history, really. Um, so when the when you were asked if you wanted to do the um, embryo transfer training, were you thinking at that time like this is like I'm going to use the embryo transfer business to pay for this farm, or were you just like, oh, this seems interesting? Well, I realized at a very early stage that that milk is a commodity, and I would never make any great amounts of money with a commodity. Usually the middleman always makes money out of commodity. So somehow I, I had to make some money and I, I realized I could do it with genetics. And the first farm I ever worked at at North Sea Holsteins, we was run by a guy called Harold Nicholson, who was one of the great showmen in the past in our country. And we had numerous uh, all Britons, you know, we won the Royal Show a few times, the, the National Holstein Show. No, no one could ever beat us. So I got used to winning, if you know what I mean. And once you get used to winning, it, 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 it's a habit. And once you've won, you want to win again, or I, I always did. Um, but I wanted to do it for myself and I had to find a way of doing it for myself. And I knew I would never pay for my farm or anything with just producing milk because there's just not enough money in it. But, and you are controlled by, by the buyers where you are over here. But the one thing that no one could control was my genetics. Um, so I saw that as a way of buying and paying for my farm. So I went down that route. It, it, it's a route I knew. I knew how to win. Winning becomes a habit. And once you start doing it, you want it even more. And even to this day, I still I love winning. How do you start winning, though? That's where I'm at. Well, <laughs> you, you, have to, you, you, you have to learn. You, you, you start at the bottom, and um, I started buying calves, um, and I used to buy the best genetics I possibly could. I'll give you a little story. I used to, um, I was working in Saudi, and, and I kind of bought a, a couple of heifers, and I thought, these aren't the heifers I went, so I kind of left Saudi, and we started working for myself I went over to the Canadian Winter Fair and I saw a cow called Ruti Valley Improved with and she was my almost ideal cow at the time so I thought God, you know I'd love something out of this anyway I went on a tour up to Deerlax I, I got very friendly with a guy called Martin Roberge uh, I don't know whether you know Martin He's, yep, he's up in, in, in Quebec and he used to come over and, and, and help me over in England and, and then I used to go over there and, and, and help him. Anyway, we were going around, we were around Dalax at the time and, and I saw that they had a daughter of this prude because they, they owned prude. And I asked how much they wanted for it and they wanted $25,000 because obviously it was a daughter of a Winter Fair champion. So I didn't, I didn't have that kind of money. So anyway, I went home, had a meeting with my bank manager, and I said to him, I want to borrow some money. So it was about £12,000 at the time, because it was about two to one. He says, all right, you're all right, Mr. Nutsford. He says, uh, you know, what do you want it for? Do you want a new car, a motorcycle? I said, no, a cow. <laughs> well, he... he he nearly fell off his chair. <laughs> I bet. Dad stopped laughing and picked himself up. And I told him all about the cow and what I wanted to do, what my aims were. Anyway, he lent me the money, so I actually bought I bought the calf. It was a it was a midnight off Rooty Valley and Prude. And that was probably my, my first big time purchase. He liked midnight. We had some of them at home when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. He, he's proved and crashed eventually, but. But he was a pretty good ball, really good orders, and 
yeah, yeah. So that that that, that I actually met my wife uh, through through that cow as well because I was selling her dad some embryos from it, and uh, anyway, I, 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 I was telling him all about it, and I said I've got these embryos for sale. I would flushed it to Black Star, and he says I'll just ask my daughters. And anyway, he asked his daughter, he came back, he says, yeah, he says, um, he says, uh, I'll have them, the girls want them. So I went up there, and anyway, I saw, I saw this, this, this bird sat on this, this uh, chair, and I thought, oh, she's all right, she is. And uh, <laughs> anyway, and then I never thought anything of it, put the eggs in, and then about a week later, I guess this phone call from my dad, oh, he says, I'm trying to buy this uh, black star daughter. He says, uh, "Would you uh, would you come and have a look at it for me?" I says, "Aye, right, okay, I'll come and have a look at it." He says, "I'll tell you what, I'll meet you at this festival park in uh, in Stoke, and 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 we'll go on and we'll see it after work." I says, "I says, grand." So anyway, I get there, and instead of Bill, my father-in-law there, it, it was his daughter Susan. So I thought, hey, well, this is a setup, and actually it, it probably was. But anyway, we went, saw the cow, we bought the cow, and, and then I, I married her about a year later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, there, you, there you go. It's got to be confidence building when your father-in-law sets you up with his daughter. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you that didn't. Yeah, well, I, I had didn't happen to me. I had a little more confidence when I. I I had to go and ask him if uh, if I could marry him. I couldn't find him anywhere. Anyway, he was, he was in the local market, so I had to go to the local market and ask him there in front of everybody. So that was a bit scary. <laughs> but anyway, got the job done. <laughs> That's awesome. So then, anyway, they, we we continued to uh, to import cows from Canada and, and just an odd one and. and and in fact, the, the the last cow I ever imported from Canada, she she actually went ninety seven points. Um, yeah, Rudy Mattia, she she was a she was a Rudolph daughter, and of course it's a lot harder for us to to import cows from Canada now. They, they I think they just have to be from char herds, which yeah makes it a little difficult. And I think genetics through embryo transfer and IVF and everything. Are, are, a sort of much the same worldwide now, anyway, or or, or most of the, the westernised countries. As I say, as I'm going round, judging all these these um, national shows, yeah. So, um, when you when you like were buying embryos, where were you sourcing most of them? Like when you rebuilt the herd fifteen years ago or so, where, where were you sourcing all your genetics from? Well, what anyway, most, most, mostly Canada and the US, really. Um, yeah, I just when I we, what what happened? I, I uh, once we got going and everything, we we kind of won every show, every. In fact, I think it was two thousand and five. Uh, I might be uh, too wrong, but we won every major every major show in the UK. And, and, and most of the smaller shows, but we, the thing about it was we, we, we did it with different cows. I never used to carve cows in uh, just for a show, just when the cows carved, there was always one cow I could go and show. And, and, and yeah, so, so um, just shortly after we, we did that, we, we, we won the Royal, the National, and, all sorts. Um, there's a guy called Robert Wills. He uh, he kept phoning me up to go down and do his first year. And I said, no, I said, he's too far away. And uh, and he kept phoning and phoning. And anyway, one day he phoned. And uh, I'd had a bad milking. You know, sometimes when you have a bad milking, you get kicked and you get shit on, you get peed on and you get this. <laughs> and I came in and Robert... Robert Robert Wills rang, and uh, well, like I can sympathize. Cole has robots, and Adam milks two cows, so I, I, I feel. <laughs> Listen, well, the reason I have robots is because I was sick of getting kicked and shit on. So, 
<laughs> well, I had one of them milkings, and I, and I come in. Anyway, Robert ring, Will, Wills rings me up. Hey, Mark, and I said to him, we got to it, and I says, if, if, if some bugger would, would buy me cows, I says, they'll be all gone today, I'll tell you, after the milking out. Oh, he says, we will. I says, you what? He says, yeah, we will, we'll buy them. Ah, right. Uh, so I started backtracking. I says, oh, I don't think Sue will sell them. And, and, you know, how much do you want for them? He says, well, I says, I don't, I don't know. I'd, I'd need at least three grand a head, but I'd have to ask her Sue because says, she's there every day. I'm out doing embryo transfer. And she doesn't want to sell them. We're not going to sell them. Anyway, I went and asked Sue. She says, no, no. I said, I'm not, not selling them. worth more than that. So I says, anyway, I went back to Robert. says, no, she doesn't, she doesn't want to sell them. So that was the end of that. Anyway, about a week later, she'd had a bad milk in. She'd come in and she'd been kicked and shit on and paid on. She said, I think we should have sold them cows. Anyway, I quickly got on the phone to Robert Wills and I said, Sue, Sue's had a change of mind. I said, you can have them cows. 